back here on WISDR. John Stegen here with Kevin Barnett for the second portion of the BS Report. In the first portion, we recapped the South and the Eastern Region. Now we're moving on to the Western Region of the NCAA Tournament. We're in the round of 64. The top-seeded Arizona Wildcats took care of Weber State in the end, 68-59. to the 8th seed Gonzaga Bulldogs beat Oklahoma State in what well, many people were picking Oklahoma State that game. I actually Peter. had Oklahoma State in the Final Four. Oh, God. We're going to get into that in a second. <laughs> uh, North Dakota State upset the Oklahoma Sooners. Called it. Same here. San Diego State, the Aztecs defeated New Mexico State. And one of, one of the almost greatest comebacks I ever saw. Almost, almost. Baylor defeated Nebraska in the round of 64. Creighton took care of business against Louisiana Lafayette. Oregon defeated BYU, and then Wisconsin absolutely demolished American in the round of 64 by 40. And 35 points. 35 points. They were they were at one point on a 40 to 8 run. Oof. I think it was. It was really bad. Uh, but what's what stood out to you in that in the round of 64? For me though, it it was Gonzaga defeating Oklahoma State. Many people had the Sooners making a bit of a run. Um, including yourself, having them go to the Final Four. Explain your reasoning, sir. Uh, um, yeah, you meant the Cowboys. Actually. The Cowboys. I'm Sooners, sorry. Sooners. The Sooners are, are Oklahoma. Oklahoma. That's yes. right. Well, they lost too, so they it was lost, a bad day. Lost, it was yeah. a bad day for Oklahoma. Why I had that? I mean, I look. They had the bad stretch, losing seven in a row. Marcus Smart suspension. And then uh, I, I've always liked Travis Ford mm -hmm. as a coach. He was a former coach at UMass, and he got the job at Oklahoma State. But not only that, I just think they're really talented. Marcus Smart has just got a fire in him that I really like. I was thinking he can go on, like as you mentioned, like a Kemba Walker-esque mm -hmm. run. And then he's got great complimentary players. Guys like LeBron Nash is a really talented player. But they just kept getting in a lot of foul trouble, Oklahoma State. They weren't hitting their free throws. It just was not a good day for the, for the Cowboys. Uh, I, I admit I had Oklahoma State going the Elite Eight. Yeah. So uh, I mean, a I lot of people had them over Arizona. Arizona I did. is not a popular pick. I did. Uh, I, again, Arizona's not a popular pick, but they, I, they are proving critics wrong. One um, thing, one pick I do feel good about is I have Baylor in the Elite Eight. You have Baylor in the Elite Eight. And they're looking really good right now. They did. They, getting to the round of 32 games, we'll start with that one. They beat Creighton and Doug McDermott by 30, 85 to 55. Creighton was the top-ranked offensive efficient team in the entire nation Doug this McDermott year. puts up 30 points a game, and they, exactly. only, they only put up 55 as a team. Exactly. I mean, I watched them play Nebraska. Their defense was stifling. Granted, the, Nebraska's Nebraska. offense is not exactly high power. It's not high power, don't, don't get me wrong, but, I mean— Look, I mean, they put up most of their points in the last three minutes in us. So, mm -hmm. um, I had Oregon in the Sweet 16. I was a little bit disappointed about that. Um, they were they made their uh, Sweet 16 team last year. Oregon mm -hmm. uh, as a 12 seed, even they they should not have been a 12 seed last year with a, they won the Pac-12 regular and yeah tournament titles. Last so year. I mean, I I disagree with you because I have Wisconsin in my Final Four. Uh, I just don't really like Bo Ryan when it comes to I mean, there's some certain coaches that just don't coach well in the tournament. Bo Ryan, Bill Self, besides the national championship runs. Well, Bo Ryan led a comeback against Oregon and got them the eventual eight point win. They Bo were Ryan, trailing at halftime. Bo Ryan, Oregon. for the most part, is not a good tournament coach. Well, he's going to disprove it this year. Rick Barnes is another example. Rick not Barnes from Texas. Bob yep. Huggins has not really been a very successful tournament coach. Virginia, yep. They're, they're really some of these coaches just don't perform in the tournament. And maybe it's not them. Maybe just don't have teams and maybe have a bad day. Bo Ryan is on my list of those guys I would not trust. That's why I have Baylor beating. I had I had I had a Wisconsin Oregon and she's me beating them. Okay, well, all right. So the uh, so the round of thirty two matchups were Arizona going up against Gonzaga. Arizona took care of business against Gonzaga. They move on to the Sweet Sixteen to play the San Diego State Aztecs, who took care of business against North Dakota State. Uh, for me, that Sweet Sixteen matchup is really easy to pick. I don't believe in San Diego State. I mean, I had them. I have them. I had originally did have them in the. Uh, I had them beating North Dakota State. I mean, look, North Dakota State. I mean, it, it was a great comeback they had against the Sooners. Mm. Uh, I was worried because of how the, the, what happened with Oklahoma State. Yeah, like exactly. how they how they blew it uh, against New Mexico State, who had that kid that was oh my god, yeah. it was a mammoth. He was like Andre the Giant. People were calling him, <laughs> but they looked really good against North Dakota State, like who. Isn't a great three-point shooting team. Obviously, I think the worst in the country. They said, mm -hmm. but I, I, I mean, I think it's going to be a lot closer than what people predict. Don't forget, Steve Fisher is experienced in these situations. He, the, the coach of uh, San Diego State. This game, I, I really, I don't, I really don't see the Aztecs winning. I think this was one of the easiest games for me to pick. I'm going to be honest with you. And, uh, and if we're talking about another, like I said, guys, don't perform, Sean Miller, another guy who doesn't really perform well in the tournament. Uh, listen, I think that Arizona. I think they really, they again, they beat. I what Gonzaga by twenty three points, 
Yes. I mean, Gonzaga's a good team. They beat Oklahoma well, State. Mark Few, another terrible tournament coach. Well, okay. Well, still, 23 points. Yes, that's it, very true. It is, is Aaron, a Gor- Aaron Gordon's a good player. He'll, he'll be the best player in the court. I, I mean, I do have Arizona winning the game. Okay. So, we both agree Arizona's going to move on to the Elite Eight, beating San Diego State. I think it'll be by at least 15. Uh, that's that's my prediction. You obviously think it's going to be closer than that. Yes. You think it's going to be closer than that. All right. Fair enough. Uh, and then on the bottom half of the West bracket, uh, I had Creighton going to the Sweet 16. Obviously, Baylor demolished them. So, um, But I had, I do have Wisconsin in there, and I do have Wisconsin beating Baylor. I think that Baylor zone will not be able to stop the uh, plenty of Wisconsin shooters. They're not one-dimensional like Creighton. If you stop Doug McDermott, you stop Creighton. Wisconsin, they have at least four people who can put the ball in the basket from all areas of the court, especially three-point range. What What if they have a bad day, though? I mean, they're shooting 42% in the tournament thus far from deep. I think that they stay hot. Uh, I just, shooting I, is I, contagious. I'm, I'm staying, I'm obviously, you know, we talk about stick with our pair. I'm sticking with Baylor going to the Elite Eight. All right, I respect uh, that. I'm sticking with it. it. Uh, their defense is playing fantastic right now. And Wisconsin's a great defensive team, too. They're, mm-hmm. That's what they're known for. Bo Ryan is known to be a great defensive coach. But I, I just sticking with Baylor. Just I mean, slowly. I mean, hey, look, if I thought Wisconsin was going to be Oregon, maybe it would have been the other way around. But I'm just going to stick with what I originally thought. So I'm sticking with Baylor. Again, Baylor is playing really hot. They, can they beat Wisconsin? Yes, but I think Wisconsin is able to shoot their way out of the zone with their plenty of, of shooting options. Uh-huh. And boom, mark it down, Baylor, final four. Your, your final bold four. prediction, final Baylor is the four. final four. For everyone listening, Kevin Bartnett is going on record saying final. Baylor to the final four, final four, defeating Wisconsin, and then most likely going on to defeat Arizona. What's, what's the name of that coach, Scott Drew? I believe so, yeah, yes. His time is due. His He's time. come so close many times. He's been to like th- about three or four elite eights, I believe. Uh, they, lo- they they've been to a lot of elite eights. So I don't think they'll even get there this year. I think oh. they're going to lose to Wisconsin. I think you're wrong, Stanko. All right, well that's it for you're the West wrong. region. Now moving on to the by far the region that has wrecked everyone's brackets, bracket buster central, the Midwest region. Uh, where everyone uh, was saying this is by far the hardest region, and I, I agree that it was. I disagreed, actually. I thought the South was when you had Florida, Kansas, and Syracuse <laughs> as the top three, but that's not looking too good right now. All right, well, Wichita State, the number one seed in the round of 64. They demolished Cal Poly, the only under 500 team to get into the tournament. Uh, Kentucky, in a, in a pretty good round of 64 game, beat Kansas State uh, by a score of 56-49. to St. Louis did Defeated North Carolina State. I want to touch on that game because make your free throws. Oh man, oh man, don't even get me started on that game. I, I, like, oh, um, Jordan, Jordan Jet. First off, what a name. Oh yeah, great what a, name. What a name, Jordan Jet. He belongs in like backyard baseball, backyard basketball with that type of name. I was losing so many brain cells over that game. T.J. Warren, the ACC Player of the Year, was like three of ten from the free throw line. Yeah, yeah. shot terrible. I, from I was losing time. so much. Granted, he finished with twenty-eight points. He had a great overall great game. Great overall game. He just in his free. He could have had. 38 points. I know, but granted, when he fouled out, that, that was when it doomed the Wolfpack. And I picked the Wolfpack in that I game. I had St. Louis in that game, actually. It was, it was one of the, I mean, I mean, I always stick it to 2 12 5. 2 12 be A 12 5 happens every year, not three usually. It should it should have been all 4 12. It should have been all 4 12. should have been all 4 12. Actually, VCU should have beaten Stephen F. Austin, if we're being well, real here. I, well, it doesn't matter. I mean, it was a great game to watch, but it was ugly. It uh, was ugly. Ugly. Oh man, I was I, like I said, I was I was like shaking my head so much at this game. Yeah. Uh. So again, North Carolina State, the 12 seed, cannot beat St. Louis, the five seed, and St. Louis moves on. And then we definitely got to touch on the MAC representative, uh, the 13 seed Manhattan Jaspers. It gave Louisville the game. They gave them a run for their money in the round of 64. Louisville though did come out on top, 71 to 64, the final score. But what can you say about Manhattan? I mean, Luke Hancock just pulled what he did. He, what Luke Hancock did to them was what he did in the Final Four. Oh, exactly. Year. Luke Hancock just did a replica mm-hmm. of what he did last year in the Final Four. They couldn't stop Hancock. That's what it came down to. Mm-hmm. Um, they did a great job containing Harrell, but down low, and they, he was getting really frustrated. He's a good player too. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, look, I'm, I mean, I don't like Manhattan, so I was rooting for Louisville. I mean, I mean obviously, uh, uh, I mean, we're Iona fans, but I think. I mean, they did a good job representing our conference. They did a fantastic job representing the MAC. Absolutely unbelievable job. I went into that game expecting them to lose by 20. I was like, listen, we play the same style, but Louisville's just more talented. But Coach Patino said it best after the game. He's like, listen, when we scrimmage against ourselves, we play terrible because we hate playing the style that we play. Like, if we hate going against it. And that's what Manhattan did. And what Coach Mazziello did with less talent was he really made Louisville look vulnerable. Right. And, I mean, obviously, people liked what he did because it was reported today Steve Mazziello is no longer in the MAC going to USF, the University of South Florida, 
when on a five year, I think, reported six and a half million dollar deal. Good for him. Good for him. He's so, a young coach. He's he's very good coach. Thirty nine years old. I mean, he's got the Patino name attached to him. He was Rick Patino's ball boy when he was with the Knicks. He he played under him. He was an assistant when he was at Kentucky. So he's got Patino lineage. It was fantastic. His him. react when Manhattan when you saw Manhattan's reaction when they yeah. got they were going crazy. And you should see Steve Masiello just covers his face. He did not want to play Rick Patino. There is a great piece on Grantland that was written about this game, about Manhattan preparing for this game and the game as a whole. I encourage everyone to go read it. It's a fantastic piece. Uh, even if I'm even if you're not a Manhattan fan, I'm not, and I still I enjoyed it. It was a fantastic read, so I really do recommend it to everyone. And I want I want to thank the Jaspers. Really, a phenomenal game representing the MAC conference. That's very true. They gave Louisville. It was a great round of 64 game. It gave it gave the MAC a spotlight. Um, another uh, moving on in the West in, in the Midwest region on the round of 64 games. Tennessee, who won their playing game against Iowa, defeated UMass in the round of 64 I had to move on. I had UMass, uh, so you got me on that one. <laughs> um, but then the other round, 64 game that nobody had. I mean, I I want to know who picked this game logically. Actually, I actually know two people who did, but for unbasketball reasons. Uh, but Mercer defeats Duke, 78 uh, to 71, I believe the final score was, wrecking everyone's bracket. Uh, and Coach Chevsky exits the tournament early. I think uh, Rashad Suleiman was the only Duke player that actually woke up and ate his breakfast that day. It's true. He had his Wheaties. No one else did. I mean, he was the only one who showed up for them. And meanwhile, Mercer, they came together, and they, quite frankly, they so they were not as good as Duke talent-wise. No, not but they, they played a better basketball they game. They played a better game, though. They absolutely outplayed Duke and there, deserved to win that basketball there was game. No, like, there was no lucky play in that game. That was just Mercer taking it to Duke and playing better basketball. Play, absolutely. Couldn't uh, agree more. So, I mean... I Again, that hurt me. I do go in the Elite Eight, uh, so that one that one hurt my bracket quite a bit in the round of 64. But uh, you Mercer deserved to move on. Uh, the final two round of 64 games, Texas defeated Arizona State on a buzzer beater. A great game. I don't think many people saw because it, it was late I at night. I saw that. I saw that game. I watched every second of it. I, it was a great every game. Second, but every second of the end of it. Yes. Yeah, it was a great game. Uh, Texas comes out on top, and then Michigan uh, defeated Wofford by 17 in the round of 64. So those two favorites moved on, and then in the round of 32. Uh, we're going to go bottom to top. You had Michigan defeating Texas. Michigan, I mean, they took it to Texas. It wasn't much of a contest. A final score, 79-65. to 65. You had Tennessee versus Mercer. God bless you if you had this matchup in the in the round of 32. <laughs> uh, but Tennessee moves on, defeating Mercer. And then you had Louisville against St. Louis. Louisville took it to St. Louis. Wasn't much competition. But then you get to possibly the game of the year, and by far the game of the tournament, Kentucky-Wichita State. Um, normally, this this the seedings would be the other way around. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, the seedings would be the other way around. And if we're going on talent wise, talent alone, the seedings should be switched. Uh, because Kentucky, they assembled one of the greatest recruiting classes ever the, this year. It was it was voted as the it was said to be the greatest recruiting class of all time. Even better than the Fab Five, even mm -hmm. better than the Fab Five. Uh, Kentucky's just more talented team than Wichita State. That's what it came down to. Uh, Greg Marshall, I if I was a, if I was a big program, get on, get call him immediately, mm -hmm. call him immediately, and offer him whatever you can, because if we're going on talent, Wichita State can't roll with Kentucky. But well, but Clay Anthony early for Wichita I, he State. He is one of my favorite players in college basketball. Clay Anthony. Thirty-one points, threw down a monster jam as he well. He played. He I, he won me over so much that last year alone, mm -hmm. last year he won me over. Um, this uh this year though, I mean look. Collie Stein though is not a uh, not a bet. It's not an easy matchup for anybody mm -hmm. uh, down low. And then you got the twins. I know, mean, I, again, Andrew Harrison, I believe, was playing with a hyperextended elbow. Yeah, and he did perfectly fine. I believe he led them in scoring that twin, game. I mean, the twins are, are the twins. Are mean that uh, Kentucky is just? I thought was just too talented. I mean, I, I had Kentucky winning the game, uh, the first round game against Kansas State, but I had Wichita just cause, based on how they played alone in their tournament pedigree last year. But you, you, you can't count Kentucky out. You say seedings don't matter. Yeah, tell that to Wichita State. Well, again, I think it's safe to say Wichita State got the uh, got the rough end of the bargain, if you will. Uh, obviously, safe. I mean, if this is Memphis or George Washington, I think this isn't even. Like, oh, it, it's not even a comparison. I agree with you that Kentucky was underseeded. Uh, they were. I'm according to the BPI of ESPN, they were the most underseeded team in the tournament. But I, this to me, it's a disgrace. This game happened in the round of 32. Both coaches said this should have been an elite eight matchup, a final four matchup, and it happened in the round of 32. But this, the atmosphere of this game was by far the best of any game this tournament thus far. It had a Final Four atmosphere to it because you had 
the Fab Five freshmen, not comparing them to Michigan, but you had five freshmen, John Calipari, expert of the one and done, versus Wichita State, a experienced team with seniors in their starting lineup who play by a game plan and don't have a, a nearly as much individual talent yeah. as the Wildcats. You had the most hyped team coming into this year and then the undefeated team. Mm -hmm. So it was definitely fantastic. I was just, I was sad which side. You always, even, because even though Wichita was a higher seed and the favorite to win, they were still the under. They were still like the underdog in people's Nobody hearts. deserved to lose this game. Both teams played really well. Kentucky played their best game of the year, and they could only beat Wichita State by two on a neutral court. Yep. And Wichita State had a good chance to win it. Van Vliet had a good look at three at the buzzer, but it just didn't fall in. Yes. Um, I'm normally people still see Wichita as the underdog in this game because it's like th th this doesn't happen very often. We're in Kentucky. They're they're a blue blood in college basketball. So mm -hmm. I think Wichita State was still like people were rooting for them, but Kentucky, I think when it, yeah, like push came to shove, was playing played better and, and deserved to win the game. Uh, for me, this game ranks in the top three this season. I go both Duke Syracuse regular season matchups. I thought both those games were unbelievable games. Both came down to final plays. I love those two games, and you had the Jim Beheim blow up. So yeah, which wasn't necessary because it was a foul on Rodney Hood. But yeah, anyway. Well, there was a foul in the, in the first matchup anyway when Rodney Hood went for the dunk to win the game against Syracuse. So tip for tat. Uh, but then this game I put up there in the top three because a phenomenal game. Neither team deserved to lose. And I was sorry, I was sorry Wichita State lost because I think they wanted to disprove everyone. They wanted to give a voice to the mid major saying, hey, we're here. We're, we're finally relevant to be a good number one seed. Yeah, I mean, they, they proved all, all their doubters right, sadly. I mean, I, with that being said, though, they played a great basketball game. Losing to Kentucky is no shame. That's exactly. It. But people will say, oh, they're not that good. They're not that good. And then people in doubters' eyes, Kentucky's an eight seed. They were an underachieving team. And well, then Kentucky, they, in reality, should have been a six or a five. I thought they should have been. A, I thought they. Had a, I thought they should have been a five. No doubt about it. I thought. I thought they could have been a six or a five. They were top twenty-five all year until they struggled towards the end of the year. Mm -hmm. this but they made it to the SEC championship game, where they lost to Florida. So they only lost by one to Florida. They yeah. had a chance to win it. So they are. They're playing great basketball, and that brings us to the to the Sweet Sixteen, where Kentucky is going up against Louisville. Second, and what second time in three years of meeting in the tournament? In the tournament, I mean, you could argue say the second best uh, college rivalry behind Duke UNC. Uh, John Calipari versus Rick Pitino. Uh, who do you got winning this one? Moving on to the Elite Oh, eight. man. Uh, and and the uh, uh, funny thing is also the location of this game is in Indi Indiana. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, like, there's going to be fans for both teams yes. there. Um, I don't know, man. And it's also keep in mind, this one region, there's three SEC teams. Exactly. The SEC yeah. had a three down SEC. year, and they have all no. three. Oh, no, no, my bad. I thought Louisville was a, Louisville's not an SEC team. Well, regardless, SEC there teams. are three SET, SEC teams left in the tournament, and they said that we're having a down year. All three of the teams that made the tournament are still in it. Yes. So yeah. there you go, critics. Um, I feel that... I, cause I keep everything I say related, like oh they played great last year, they played great last year, has come back to bite me in my bracket. Mm -hmm. So I think right, I think if you Kentucky plays the way they played against Wichita, they're gonna win. I don't think they're going to do that though for some reason. I think Louisville is going to win. I was really sad so they played against St. Louis. So yeah. I'm going with Louisville. Oh, uh, I agree with you. I think that Louisville will pull this one. I think it'll be really close. And who won the game during the regular season? Do we know who won? The uh, game? I, I believe Louisville. Kentucky won. Kentucky actually. Kentucky beat did beat Louisville in the beginning of the season. Though. Yes. Um, but listen, I think that the big key is how will the Kentucky freshman guards handle the pressure of Louisville when they're playing their best defense of all of their entire season? How will they be able to handle that pressure for a full 40 minutes? Mm -hmm. I think that'll be the true test. And to the, to the fan that, like, just fills out a bracket, this is not the same Louisville team as last year. They don't have Gorgie Dang, Peyton mm -hmm. Siva, uh, Chamber Hanning kicked off the team. Mm -hmm. Um... Uh, I think that, though, right now, the X Factor, though, is last year's X Factor is Luke Hancock. Luke Hancock, exactly. Luke Hancock. I mean, look, he's not the best player. He's not the most athletic. I mean, but he cool. likes the spotlight. What are you going to do? Yeah, I mean, I think if Kentucky if Kentucky takes him out of the game, actually, they'll be fine. Uh, but, like, Russ Smith um, is a good college ball player. Uh, it's a lot on his shoulders, too. You know, Russ Smith almost went to Manhattan. Yes, he did. That's insane. He almost went he to almost Manhattan. went to Manhattan because he couldn't because he felt he couldn't compete with the big boys of, of Louisville and the and the and the competition they and play. And then he helps him win the national championship. Exactly. So how crazy is that? Yeah, it's a small world. Uh, in the final three sixteen matchup that we will preview, the eleven seed Tennessee Volunteers going against the Michigan Wolverines, the number two seed. Uh, I think that Michigan uh, will win this one just because they can. 
they can score in bunches. Now I think Tennessee can score enough. I would love to see simple. what Michigan would be doing with, with Mitch McGarry right now, mm -hmm. who was like a nobody and then just won over everybody last year in the tournament. Um, I like Michigan this game, and I like Michigan to take the region. You like Michigan to take the region? I originally had Wichita, and it was between Wichita and Michigan. But I like Michigan to take the – I mean, I originally had Duke in the Elite Eight. Not a good pick after all, but I no. was torn between that Duke and Michigan game. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, I, I said if I thought Michigan was going to beat Duke, I would have put them in the Final Four. But I had Wichita in the Final Four. Uh, I think Michigan actually, when I look at who I think is going to win, I think Michigan is going to is going to have their second straight appearance in the national championship. You game. really do. I really do. I, I love what they're the way they're playing right now. Yeah, their offense is clicking on all cylinders. Uh, I think the key thing is though is that Tennessee has two bigs down low, and they will control the rebounding margin. I mean, it's safe that, to say that is where they're going to miss Mitch McGarry. Exactly. Obviously, the but... thing is though, I think if Michigan makes enough shot makes enough shots, that rebounding margin won't matter as much because Michigan will trade three for two all they long because you know Michigan's going to bang in at least eight three-pointers. So yeah. if they trade in enough three for twos, I think they'll be able to pull this one out. And I, th I think they can win by 10. I think it could be a double-digit win. I think Michigan is the best remaining team in this region. Not talent-wise, because that talent-wise is Kentucky. Mm -hmm. But uh, just the way, like, with experience, talent, uh, coaching, uh, the system they run, Michigan, I think, is the best remaining team in this region. And the whole right side of the bracket. Um, I'll say my remaining, if I had to pick, I'll keep go with my gut. Uh, Florida and Michigan State in the Final Four. Florida... In the final, in the national championship, and then I'll say, um, I'll say, Era, uh, Baylor in the my mm -hmm. other side. Your and bold prediction, Michigan, Michigan in the final four. However, I don't think Baylor. I think Michigan will be too much for Baylor. I like Michigan and Florida, and Florida winning it all. All right, well there you go. For me, uh, all my final four is still in it, so I gotta, I gotta stick to my guns. Uh, I like Florida, Michigan State. I like Louisville in the Midwest. I think they get out of that. Um, and then I still have Wisconsin in the Final Four. I'm scared because Arizona, they really played well against Gonzaga. And if they beat San Diego State by a good margin, I'm really scared if Wisconsin can get by Baylor, if they can hang with Arizona. But I'm going to stick to my guns and stay with the Badgers in the West region. It seemed like the na nationwide consensus Final Four was Florida, Arizona, Michigan State, and Louisville. Mm. That's all I was hearing was from yeah. everybody. So um, it's good to see at least you think Wisconsin will be in I I'm sticking to my guns. I'm sticking with Wisconsin. Um. No, Badgers, but, don't let me down. Uh, Florida, I have Florida over Michigan in the final. I have Florida over Louisville in the and final. And I think Billy, Billy Donovan will get his third and cement himself as one of the greatest college basketball coaches of all time. Now, the same could be said for Rick Pitino, though, if he wins. That's right. He has two, I believe. He has two as well. Uh, if Rick Pitino wins, he, I think Rick Pitino is already one of the best. He Tom, is already one of the best. But he can, he can Tom go is like that top two argument. Hit, him or Krzyzewski. I mean, you could put him up there in the top three all time if Rick Pitino wins. I mean, I mean, when we push comes to shove, let's be real. No one's, no one is, caught, is uh, topping John Wooden. No, he's number one. Wooden number, is one number one pedestal. He's like Vince Lombardi of of college and there's basketball. Dean, there's other guys like Dean Smith, Adolph Roth, again, Bobby I'm just, Knight. I'm just yeah. saying he can go into the argument. Yes. I'm just saying that he can go into that top five, top three argument. Yeah, I think the top five. I'm going my college at all time. Wooden, or definitely Wooden, Coach K, Rupp. Um, for sure, uh, Rupp, Wooden, Coach K, Rupp are my top three. And then you have Bobby Knight, I think, deserves to be in there. Mm -hmm. And who did I just say, actually, while I'm drawing a blank? I, I, I don't, you mentioned four. Oh, I'm drawing a blank, but, I mean. There's your top four. Yeah. Bayheim is another great coach. I mean, rarely does Syracuse ever. Never, oh, Dean Smith, another and great Dean's, one. Exactly. So, there's Lo so many good coaches. So there you hear it. Kevin Barnett's top four, and then a couple extras of head, coach, head coaches in men's basketball. Yeah. Uh, we'll take a short break here on the BS Report, come back with a little bit NFL free agency so uh, Kevin Barnett can get his little bit of a dose in before he goes and does some homework. Uh, but this is John Sang and Kevin Barnett for the BS Report here on WICR. Uh -huh. 